I had remembered hearing that some of the school shooters um, back in the 90s were some, in some way involved in bullying. So I did some research, and what I found really shocked me. 12 out of the 15 school shooters in the 90s were victims of bullying, not bullies as kids, but victims of bullying. How do we account for that? Well, I don't know if that would be my question, but... <laughs> hey, if you're uh, willing uh, to answer, uh, Rick, it's your it. question. I think, as you have uh, so clearly articulated, that one of the things that happens for targets victims of bullies is that they suffer from what we would call uh, chronic stress, uh, uh, depression, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and even worse, a feeling of absolute helplessness with the sense, again, without intervention, with they develop a sense that no one is going to help me manage this. And so you, when you're in that position, you have a couple of options, not very many. One is to withdraw completely, Another is to kill yourself. Another may be to try and kill somebody who's been bothering you. So, I mean, there's probably more range of options, mm -hmm. but just to, to keep it brief. So, um, I would account for it as a, a sign, and this is not an excuse for school shooters. This is an explanation, potential explanation, um, that the chronic stress and the level of helplessness is so high and becomes so internalized that they absolutely see perhaps no other way out. Mm -hmm. Having never been a school shooter nor a particularly violent person, I don't know for sure, but that's, that's kind of what I imagine is going on in the heads of those kids. Well, uh, a, just as an aside to that, that's where the law falls short. Because when you look at the debate over gun control today, something that comes up a lot, and it's true with the bullying, is the lack of funding to help with mental health disorders. Because when you look at those mm -hmm. kids that engaged in the school shootings, every single one had some type of underlying mental health disorder that went undetected or untreated. And so it's great that we have this bullying legislation. There's heightened, aware, heightened awareness and we're teaching kids about that behavior, but there needs to be more funding for that piece of it. Otherwise, unfortunately, some of it is just lip service. I'm not to undermine what we're doing and trying to do, but that's a big problem. Certainly there needs to be a lot more funding of mental health and, and uh, you know, at, at all, you know, level. But I just wanted to underscore something that Rick had said about <coughs> uh, school shootings in that I had been done some research and watched the um, investigative report on Columbine. And uh, there was a team that went in and did a, a look at the personalities and what led up to why those shootings had occurred. And it, and it turned out that they were severely bullied in the school mm -hmm. and felt very alienated and very angry. And they had hit lists of, of the kids who had bullied them. And so, I, I mean, no, I'm like, like Rick, it, it's not an excuse, mm -hmm. but it certainly makes us want you know learn learn a little bit more about the motives of these shooters another thing i suspect is that you know one thing that we um advise kids that are bullied um you know w it, other than staying out of school changing schools etc um what can uh, are you able to trust an adult yep. to talk to to tell the adult about um right. and you know, I, I suspect that those kids didn't have, you know, someone that they could trust mm -hmm. and talk to about these things. And that's you that's know. one of the mm -hmm. interventions. But, exactly. But uh, just to quickly pop back, you had asked sort of a sociological question. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I'm not a sociologist, I'm a social worker, which is completely different. But uh, one of the things that I think is happening in our society is there's a, a dramatic breakdown in simple politeness there's a high degree of increase in entitlement, and there's an increase in selfishness. And we see this on parents' part, too. Um, I want my kid to go to that school, I, you know, and uh, I don't want my kid in the class with that kid, um, this kind of thing. So that there's a, kids have got to pick up that, that sense as well. And if you are someone who is eight, nine, 10, 14, and your parents you see your parents doing things like, you know, tell them you're 12 when you go into the theater so we don't have to pay the full amount. You know, these kinds of things. You're sending a message to your kids that, you know, you can squeeze around the law. Don't worry about this. Mm -hmm. I got your back. Yeah. 
And I think that clearly not all parents, not even most parents, mm -hmm. but that's unfortunately rife in our culture to break down in basic manners. Right. And I don't mean to sound old fashioned, but it's really hard to find polite people. No, <laughs> absolutely. And I think the, the lack of empathy is a, is a big absolutely, problem yeah. with bullying. If you don't learn empathy at home yeah. and if you don't, if you're not empathetic well to, uh, yeah. to someone else being hurt physically or emotionally. No, I think you're right. I, I, and just not to harp on it, but with respect to Columbine, there was other research that suggested, because initially it came out and it was these kids were bullied and this is why they did this. And most of what they've pieced together is now based on journals the kids wrote or what they memorialized on their websites and the like. And you know, later investigation determined that um, these kids were in fact bullies themselves and that they suffered from anger management issues and mm -hmm. the like. And so I, I just think you can't underscore enough um, the amount of psychological help that might be needed. Because if you're suffering from an underlying anger management problem and someone bumps you in the hallway and you memorialize that as got hit in the hallway again, you read that from the outside and oh, the kid's bully. You just don't really know is my point. I'm not, I'm not an expert on Columbine. I'm not trying to suggest one way or the other. But clearly there's a disconnect somewhere. And if we're really going, if, if we're going to let the government help to solve the problem, and I'm not a big advocate that they can always solve the problem, I think we should be working at the community level more and the legislature sometimes over legislates. But if they're going to step in, they need to put the money behind it because there's a lot of underlying issues that cause it. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, a leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.